Welcome to the public hearing for the State Road A1A North Miramar Avenue Mid-Block Pedestrian Crossing Design Project in Brevard County, Florida. The purpose of this hearing is to receive public input and to give interested persons an opportunity to express their views concerning the location and conceptual design of the proposed improvements. FDOT staff are available to discuss the plans and answer questions after this presentation. Public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. When a project may be controversial, will significantly impact traffic flow, or will significantly affect accessibility to properties temporarily or permanently, it often requires a public hearing. Examples are parking removal, median openings or closures, access management issues, traffic signal removal, roadway widening, major reconstruction, and projects including detours. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information about the proposed mid-block pedestrian crossing improvements along State Road A1A or North Miramar Avenue from US 192 State Road 500 to south of Atlantic Boulevard in Brevard County, Florida. It also serves as an official forum to give you the opportunity to express your opinions and concerns about this project. This public hearing is being held relative to State Project Number 439512-1 and meets all federal and state laws that are applicable to this project. This public hearing was advertised consistent with all federal and state requirements. Letters were sent to 29 elected officials, 36 government partners, 16 agencies and businesses, and 3,141 property owners and stakeholders. Newspaper ads were published in the Florida Today newspaper, Brevard County Edition, on Sunday, July 15, 2018, and again on Sunday, July 22, 2018. An ad was also published in the Florida Administrative Register. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 office or the Tallahassee office. This contact information is also provided on a sign displayed near the sign-in table. This project is being conducted by FDOT District 5 in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws and pursuant to 23 United States Code number 327 and the implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding between FDOT and the Federal Highway Administration, signed on December 14, 2016, with the FDOT Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee as the approving authority. The project is located on State Road A1A, North Miramar Avenue, at various locations from US 192 Fifth Avenue to south of Atlantic Boulevard. The project is based on recommendations from a pedestrian safety study completed in August 2015. Over a five-year period between January 1, 2010 and December 31, 2014, 24 pedestrian bicycle-related crashes were documented within the project limits. These crashes resulted in two fatalities and 22 injuries. A large portion of the pedestrian traffic in the project area includes residents and visitors crossing State Road A1A to get to the beach. 11 sites have been identified and evaluated. 
and the FDOT is designing raised concrete mid-block pedestrian crossings at those locations. Additional safety features will also be added to the existing pedestrian crossing south of 2nd Avenue. The majority of the land uses along the study corridor includes condominiums, hotels, motels, restaurants, retail shops, public service facilities, and public recreational parks. Space Coast Area Transit, Brevard County's public transit provider, has numerous bus stops along State Road A1A, providing service to adjacent communities, such as Melbourne Beach, Melbourne, Indian Harbor Beach, and Satellite Beach, as well as to other locations within the county. Construction of the 11 new pedestrian crossings will include signs, rectangular rapid flashing beacons, or RRFBs, at six selected locations, crosswalks, curb ramps, lighting, and pavement markings. Additional safety features will be added to the existing pedestrian crossing south of 2nd Avenue. Sidewalk additions and sod modifications will also occur within the project limits to enhance beach access. Improvements also include minor drainage work. This project will not require right-of-way acquisition. The roadway will be restriped to show there is a raised island and signage will be added. The Florida Department of Transportation is coordinating with Florida Power and Light to put lights on the existing electric poles. Seven utility providers have been found within the project limits. Utility coordination will be required to determine adjustments, so there are no conflicts with the proposed construction. This is a typical plan detail sheet for the mid-block pedestrian crossings. The length of the refuge islands will vary depending on the stop bar locations. The distance between the crosswalks and the stop bar or the end of the refuge islands will vary between 30 to 50 feet to accommodate driveways and side street intersections. The mid-block crosswalks at some locations will restrict turn movements. Sign locations, striping, and other details will meet FDOT design standards. This is typical section number one for the mid-block pedestrian crossings. Between US 192 and Flug Avenue, the existing roadway typical section is a five-lane undivided urban curb and gutter section with a bike lane in each direction. The proposed mid-block crossing will be constructed within the existing 10-foot center left turn lane. Existing pavement at the mid-block location will be resurfaced and restriped. Sign locations, striping, and other details will meet FDOT design standards. This is typical section number two design for the mid-block pedestrian crossings. From Flug Avenue to south of Atlantic Boulevard, the existing roadway typical section is a five-lane undivided rural section with four-foot outside shoulders, which serve as a bike lane in each direction. The proposed mid-block crossings will be constructed within the existing 10-foot center left turn lane. Existing pavement at the mid-block location will be resurfaced and restriped. Mid-block crossing number one, south of 2nd Avenue. This is the existing pedestrian crossing that was recently completed. The pedestrian ramps will be reconstructed and the existing curb and gutter will be replaced to address flooding issues. The crossing will be restriped and the signing will be upgraded with a rectangular rapid flash beacon. There is a Space Coast Area Transit or SCAT bus stop at this location. Mid-block crossing number two, north of Watson Drive. 
A raised median refuge island with curb and a striped crosswalk will be constructed. The raised median will be 90 feet long. The roadway will be restriped to show there is a raised island and signage will be added. The crossing will be restriped and the signing will be upgraded with a rectangular rapid flash beacon. Mid-block crossing number three, north of Nemira Avenue. There is a Wells Fargo bank and a condominium complex at this location. It has a similar design to the crosswalk north of Watson Drive. The tapered nose of the island accommodates turning movements. The stop bar locations are varied to accommodate existing driveways. Mid-block crossing number four, north of Flug Avenue. There is a pizza hut and a condominium complex at this location. It also has a design similar to those previously described. Sidewalk will be added to connect to the existing sidewalk on both sides of the road to help guide pedestrians to the beach access. A bus alighting area will also be constructed. Mid-block crossing number five, north of Voskind Road. The nose of the pedestrian island will be tapered to accommodate existing driveways. Sidewalk will be constructed to provide connection between the existing sidewalk and the mid-block crossing. An eight foot wide pedestrian landing will be constructed on the northbound side of the road for bus stop boarding and alighting. The crossing will be restriped and the signing will be upgraded with a rectangular rapid flash beacon. Mid-block crossing number six, north of Del Flora Street. The initial study had the crosswalk further to the south at this location. A previously vacant lot on the west side has now been developed into a commercial strip mall. It was necessary to move the crosswalk to the north to accommodate the new development. Vehicle access to the strip mall is not restricted. A sidewalk connection to the existing hardened beach access will be added. Mid-block crossing number seven, north of Terrace Shores Drive. This is also one of the mid-block crossings that will have a rectangular rapid flash beacon. The pedestrian crossing lines up to the existing beach access on the east side. The raised refuge median will include the standard details previously described. Mid-block crossing number eight, north of Pine Tree Drive. This pedestrian crossing lines up to the existing beach access. The raised median will include the standard details. A new drainage inlet will be added to improve existing drainage on the east side. Mid-block crossing number nine, north of Poinsettia Street. New drainage inlets will be added to improve existing drainage on the east side. The crossing will be restriped and the signing will be upgraded with a rectangular rapid flash beacon. Mid-block crossing number 10, south of Harris Boulevard. This crosswalk will be constructed similar to those described above. Connections to the existing sidewalk will be added to guide pedestrians to the beach access. Mid-block crossing number 11, south of Coral Way. A new standard five foot by eight foot alighting area for buses will be constructed on the northbound side. Mid-block crossing number 12, north of Millennium Park. Drainage improvements will be made to the existing ditch. A sidewalk was recently constructed on the west side. The crossing will be restriped and the signing will be upgraded with a rectangular rapid flash beacon. 
For more information about this project, please visit www.cflroads.com. This website is the FDOT's living platform to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website, which contains the links to easy access to online information and to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the project website, you will be able to view the current project schedule details, project contact information, and access project files such as this presentation. Type the project number 439512-1 in the search box at the top of the page. Then click on Go. When the new page opens, click on the project file name. We encourage you to share your comments with us. There are many different ways you can submit your comments. Provide your comments verbally during the public comment period following the presentation. Fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box at the comments table. Take a comment form with you and mail it to the address shown on the form. Email your comments to Megan Owens, FDOT Project Manager at megan.owens at dot.state.fl.us. Make a comment to the court reporter. Use the Ask a Question button on the CFL Roads website under the Project Manager's contact information. All comments received by August 10, 2018 will become part of the official public hearing record. After this presentation, we will collect speaker cards from anyone wishing to make a verbal statement. It is important that we have your information on a speaker card for the public record because it is very important for us to hear from those who wish to speak, we will not be responding to questions during the public comment period. Once the comment period is finished, project staff will be able to answer your questions. If you have questions or would like more information, you may contact Ms. Megan Owens, FDOT Project Manager, by mail telephone, or email. Thank you for your interest in this project and for taking time to attend this public hearing. We will now call upon those of you who have turned in speaker cards. If you have not filled out a speaker card but wish to speak, please hold up your hand and a member of the project team will bring one to you. When your name is called, please come forward. Then state your name and address into the microphone. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. Again, the project team will not be answering questions during this portion of the public hearing. Members of the project team will be available after the formal comment period to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis.